Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, have you ever heard of Turbo Debt? No, what is that? Something to get me into debt faster? No, Turbo Debt is not to get you in debt faster. It's to help you get out of debt. Do you have over $10,000 in credit card, personal loans, medical, or payday loans? Of course I have debt. That's the American way. Oh, contraire, mon frere. Turbo Debt will give you the option to break the debt cycle. And start putting money in your pocket. That's awesome. Over 70% of Americans die with credit card debt. Do not let this happen to you. Turbo Debt will give you an option to break the debt cycle and start putting money in your pocket. That's awesome. If you have over 10000 in credit card debt and personal loans, medical or payday loans, they can help. Go to TurboDebt.com forward slash tech time. Again, that's TurboDebt.com forward slash tech time, all capitalized, for a free consultation today. Turbo Debt is a proud sponsor of this week's episode of Tech Time Radio. Broadcasting across the nation, from the East Coast to the West, keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side. With leading-edge topics, along with special guests, to navigate technology in a segmented, stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm. Pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum, the show that makes you go, hmm, technology news of the week, the show for the everyday person talking about technology, broadcasting across the nation with insightful segments on subjects weeks ahead of the mainstream media. We welcome our radio audience of 35 million listeners to an hour of insightful technology news. Each week, our show covers the weekly top technology subjects without any political agenda. We verify the facts, and we do it with a sense of humor in less than 60 minutes. And, of course, with a little whiskey on the side. We live stream during our show on five of the most popular platforms, so you two can watch us live right now at YouTube, Twitch.tv, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. We encourage you to visit our online at techtimeradio.com. And you can become a Patreon supporter at patreon.com forward slash tech time radio. We thank that Patreon supporter that came in today. Con- congratulations. You're going to get all of our uh, shows minus the commercials. That's what you get as a Patreon supporter. Do you know that, Mike? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm Nathan Mum, your host, a technologist with over 30 years sure. of technology expertise working for Fortune 500 companies across the country. My co-host here, Mike Renee, is an award-winning author, originally from Arizona. Mike's a human behavior expert living in the Seattle area with a master's degree in forensic psychology. Mike is here to keep me from geeking out while providing insight into human behavior and how it interacts with technology. We are two friends from different backgrounds but bring the best technology show possible every week for our family, friends, and fans to enjoy. Welcome, everyone. Let's start today's show. Now on today's show. All right. Today on Tech Time with Nathan Mum, Phil, our Tech Time robotics expert, is back in a segment that will be airing every month on Tech Time Radio called Chat About Chat with Phil. And like, it reminds me of Phil Donahue. Seriously? That's what I wanted to do. Yeah, that's correct. Chat About Chat with Phil. It's going to be exciting. Our Initial segment starts today. Are you excited about this? I'm excited. Okay, there you go. Now, the reason we're doing this is because there's so many AI chat stories that are out there. We're trying to not cover every one of them. So now that we have an expert. It's the thing to do. uh, We can then hopefully have some other subjects we talk about. Now, NVIDIA hits $1.0 in the market value of the booming AI demand. So NVIDIA is a graphics competitor, they are in the likes of some very large companies. Right now, they're worth a trillion in market value because the AI is using all of their processors that they are producing to create Create. these AI bots all across the nation. That's (laughs) right. Are they creating? You're going to be excited about that, right? Now, a U.S. lawyer admits using AI for case research. We're going to see what happens to him. And Elon Musk's brain chip firmware Wins U.S. approval for human studies. We'll be talking about that a little bit, too. That's great. Then we explore how a brain implant helps a paralyzed man to walk again. We also take a look at the Twitter meltdown of a presidential candidate and look back at the movie War Games on This Week in Technology. In addition, we have, of course, our standard features, including Mike's mesmerizing moment and a possible Nathan Nugget. I want to get to that today. Let me tell you, it's about Movie Pass 2.0. We're going to be talking about that. As always, we have our Pick of the Day Whiskey Tasting 
during the commercials to see if your selected whiskey pick gets zero, one, or two thumbs up at the end of the show. So sit back, raise a glass, and welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Now it's time for the latest headlines in the world of technology. Here are our top technology stories of the week. All right. Story number one, a paralyzed man has been able to walk simply by thinking about it and then the electronic brain implants essentially moves to the computer to produce walking. We got a uh, NBC clip here that we're going to go to kind of explaining what has happened with this individual. It's a 40-year-old Dutch man. Let's start it now. For more than a decade, Gert-Jan Oskam has been trying to relearn to walk. A motorbike accident in his late 20s left him paralyzed from the hips down, changing his life forever. But now, Oskam is back on his feet thanks to groundbreaking digital implants in his brain and his spine. After two days, within five to ten minutes, I could control my uh, hips. It works like this. When Oscom thinks about taking a step, a brain implant picks up the signals and sends them to a computer strapped to his back. The computer decodes it, then transmits the signal to a device in his spinal cord, triggering his legs to move. Scientists say it's like a digital bridge that bypasses the damaged part of his spine. I'm here. Yeah. In less than a year, Ostom gained the ability to walk with crutches even when the device is turned off. I am in full control of what the stimulation does. And that gives me a lot of freedom, which I didn't have with previous therapy. So far, Oscom is the only person to experiment with this digital bridge. But Swiss scientists who published the case today in the peer-reviewed journal Nature say they're planning future studies involving people with paralyzed arms and hands and even stroke victims. There you go. Uh, all right, so let's talk about this. So essentially, two circular holes were drilled out and put into the side of this guy's skull. Mm-hmm. And both of them are about five centimeters in diameter. And then essentially what happens is when his brain is involved in controlling the movement that he says there's very weak signals. So the brain still has a signal that's going in, but it's a weak signal that stops with the spinal cord. It doesn't continue on. Essentially what it does is it circumvents the whole spinal process of transmitting what this brain does. There's a computer that he's strapped into. So he has a strapped in computer that hangs out of him. And essentially then what it does is it programs him to move his feet forward to walk. Now, what they say, the Swiss team that developed the algorithm uh, essentially says that the translations of this still are very primitive. So he still doesn't walk like we would walk where you have a fluid motion. It's a very rigid type of Terminator 2 type motion. Yeah, but motion. the important piece here is that they've, been able to take the brain transmission yep. impulses and code it into a, a language that the body can understand and bypass that injury. Yeah, that's correct. And essentially, it was within like 10 minutes. So he was up and walking and walking very well. So he'd say, I want to walk. I'm trying to move my hips left and right. Think about the hip movement in a process. It's, he's the third person to have kind of this surgery. We talked about this uh, David Mezzi, who was in 2018, he was the very first patient to successfully be treated with a spinal implant. And then we also have Michael Ricotta, who became the first man to completely, with a completely severed spine, to walk again. So this technology now is developing, they say, every year at a 20-year cycle, meaning that in the next five years, <clears throat> they expect to have over 100 years of progress to be sure. implemented with this. Yeah, that's like everything. So, yeah. So just think, five years from now, if you were not able to – they're even working on this for individuals um, to have additional arm movements, additional head and neck movements. So a lot of times if you get paralyzed with your spine, you can't move your head very actively. They're actually coming up with the process so that you can actually move your head, your shoulders, and by bypassing your whole spinal cord – and having programmed spinal cord cord and having code programmed into your body itself. There you go. There you go. Now, still pretty experimental because the computers are pretty big to do this. They're not these small things that you would have taken care of. All right. Now, story number two, Mike, are you ready for this one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've oh. got two things to talk about. Okay. Oh, well, two things. Okay. And and they're both chat GPT. Okay. Let's see. Favorite How about subject. that? How is your favorite fa- subject. Your favorite subject ever. Yeah. The first one is going to be how human error can really play into this this whole new technology. Okay. So this professor 
in Texas flunked all of his students based on a claim that ChatGPT wrote their essays. What? Yeah. What? I think I think guy doesn't sound very smart. No. Guess what? What's that? His name is Dr. Jared Mum. Mum. Yes, like Mum. Is it M U M or is it M U M M? M U M M. Oh, I don't know this guy though. Oh, he, this guy better not be a, a relative. Re- sounds like a relative. Okay, so what happens to this guy now? Thanks. This sounds <laughs> yeah, really here good. We go. So, an entire Texas A and M University commerce course was accused of plagiarism and had their diplomas temporarily denied after Dr. Jared Mum okay. incorrectly used Chat GPT. Oh. So with the fear So he was of, a fan with, of Chat GPT the, too then, huh? Well this goes into this whole thing about Chat GPT replacing the actual student's work. Okay. So he he was checking his students' work to see if they were plagiarized. However, what he did was uh he asked Chat GPT if the students works were plagiarized and chat gpt replied that all the papers were in fact written by chat gpt okay so how do you do so, that so, so how, chat for, gpt took took credit for all of these these papers that these these students wrote so okay so first off this so you're telling me that this guy cut and pasted their whole assignment into chat gpt and said is this valid that is my assumption oh my word okay. so yeah so he asked he asked the chat bot if the chat bot indeed wrote the, <laughs> the and the chat bot of course took credit for everything said yes. so he failed everybody <laughs> i see and uh Seems several like a- st- several students tried to prove that their assignments were legitimate work by providing time stamps and google docs and everything like but uh his response was pretty blunt okay he basically said i don't grade ai bull beep, beep. oh wow bull beep. really yes okay uh, one at least one student has had their name cleared by providing Google Docs time stamped and received an apology. The others are still waiting. Uh, no students have failed the class and were or are barred from graduating, but their diplomas are being held uh, until they, everybody. Mom guy. What's that guy doing? I don't know, but that's really funny. The second case here is uh, was that yeah yeah yeah. We're gonna say something, Odie. Well, yeah. How do you know that? That it's being legit. Like, how can you trust Chat GPT for? Well, you're not supposed checking to. That. Well, you're not I, supposed I, to. That's ask. why we got like, Phil. Like, Phil's gonna explain all about this well, AI yeah, stuff. Yeah, but like, what makes the professor say, think that? Oh, sounds, like he, computer, yeah, sounds like he was lazy. Yeah, the sounds like he was lazy. Instead of cutting and pasting that, he should have just of, created it himself. Of, instead of put it in Grammarly. Grammarly has a plagiarism. Of, instead of looking at it there from a from yeah. a yeah, instead of looking at it from a a more. Uh, regular way of checking on this. Yeah. He he went to the source and <laughs> asked it. And asked it. A super like, computer. See, but that hey how hey how <laughs> open the bomb bay doors doors how <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> like what's the evidence to prove that? Uh nothing. And why would you blindly uh, Where's trust this guy it? from? Texas. Texas. Yeah, okay. That's, uh, figures it. Okay, wow. continue on. Yeah, we're <laughs> actually there are some mums there in are Texas. Some mums now. in Texas now. other now. than yeah, okay. there you go. There you go. So the second case is uh, a U.S. lawyer has admitted to using chat AI, chat okay. GPT, for case research. <laughs> so, okay. So these people so we've clearly talked, don't yeah, understand talked, how chat talked, GPT works, the, huh? Uh, I'm telling you, this thing is going to create more problems as we go along. So this New York lawyer is facing a court hearing of his own after the firm, after his firm used chat GPT for legal research. A judge said in the court was faced with an unprecedented circumstance after filing was found and it referenced example legal cases that did not exist. <laughs> so ChatGPT so just Chat made them GPT, up. GPT, well, they Probably found it, the information. It found the about information. That. Yeah. And again, this is one of the problems with this, this type of thing is that it didn't understand what was real and what was not real. So it spit out these cases as references for this guy. And now he's in trouble. Well, he should be. So he just decided to cut and paste too. But, but this is this is what I've been talking about. This is the problem with with partially what I've what I've talked about is that uh, humans don't necessarily comprehend the technology, so it's going to be used improperly a lot. Okay. Right. And okay, is, but that's not on Chat GPT. That's on the humans. Both of these are on humans. 
Yeah. They're they're, they're both problems. That's like saying So human expert. I'm not good what, at driving they're, they're, and I go drive a car and I get in a crash. Oh, yes. the car did yeah. it. In this case, this is human error. Okay. Yeah. In the other case, we're talking about companies that are replacing their their jobs, yeah. their human jobs with this creation by humans, yeah. which is churning out inaccurate information. And because it's in, it's doing this, we are taking it. So if you type in something it. in a search bar mm-hmm. like Google, you don't expect in the search bar, you don't expect every single result that you're asking it for to be valid, do you? No, that's why we. Okay, that's so that's why was, we need the critical percent? thinking. We need we need so to yeah, the chat GPT. But if I put it in there, it may be right or maybe thing. wrong. Here's the thing but with people. You can people. fact check it with Google by looking at all the other things that come up. Yeah. And seeing where here's, it, it, here's the thing with people. We're going to try and get the get the result that we want as the quickest way, and depending on your personality quirks and your rationality and all this, you're you're either going to take the shortest cut or you're going to take the longest cut, meaning you're going to fact check. Okay. Most people are not going to fact check. They're just going to go and do it. Why? Because a lot of times the information is going to get overlooked anyway, so nobody cares, and that's going to just reinforce the behavior. People are going to continue to do what they think is what they need to do. And so Professor Mum yeah. has done this, and even still... He is resisting him being an heir. Yeah, that's just okay, crazy. but that's just but at the same time, the, there's problems with us putting these things in place for people to use them in these ways. Now, I, I'd say for our radio show, we spend I spend a lot of time, and you know this because all of our whole production crew knows this. Fact checking our articles, right? I mean, we get a lot yeah, of submissions we, in our we, production we, meeting. Yeah, we check, we fact and, check, and we say, you know what? I I can't verify the facts a hundred percent on that one. We're not going to put it on the radio. I can't verify that. So just to let you know, uh, we may make a mistake or two, but we spend very very diligent. But everybody time. doesn't do that. Ba- back no, that's right. Everybody doesn't. Back in the seventies and eighties, when news. Cast used to come on out. They used to fact check their stuff. We do that on our radio yeah, we show. Don't. We're not sensationalized technology news. We do the research to make sure we have that information. Yeah, all so right. That that that's my that's 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 your party. Okay. What I've been saying. So. Uh, you have, and you so got two. I, I two, think you need to you call got two your, check marks need, by the need, big board. That you got two of them right. Yeah, you need to go call your call by your my relative. There. There. Yeah, I don't know what that's You're like. About. Yo, I know. <laughs> Let me teach you. What about are you doing, buddy? You put the mum name down and. A rank or two. I think that's just a, figure out that's how to use That's probably the funniest GPT. part of the article. Uh, I why. didn't even know that until I read it. That's a, there you go. All right. Story number three. You know what? What makes it easier for us is why don't we just put chips in our brain so that we don't have to worry about thinking at all. Okay, well, Elon, Elon Musk brain chip firm wins U.S. approval for human study. Let's go to the ABC News story about this item. Elon Musk's brain implant company called Neuralink says it's gotten permission from U.S. regulators to begin testing its device in people. Musk envisions brain implants could cure a range of conditions, including obesity, autism, depression, and schizophrenia. The device is about the size of a large coin and is designed to be implanted in the skull with ultra-thin wires going directly into the brain. Musk has said the first applications in people would be an attempt to restore vision. All right, all right. Did you, you did you put in? No, the, no, no. That was in there. Yeah, that was in there. I, was that really? The, the, yeah, in the there? Terminator Two music the was Terminator in there. To start with. Okay. Yeah, it was. It was. So the Neuralink implant company wants to help restore vision and mobility to people by linking brains to computers. It said that it doesn't have to essentially uh, take place immediately, but Mr. Musk is saying that he's ambitious to begin testing as he's moved from apes and to humans. Yeah. Now, what is Neuralink? Neuralink hopes to use a microchip to treat treatments such as Slow down, uh, blindness uh, and to help certain disabled people use computers and mobile technology. Now, it's interesting that it has been tested in the monkeys, and now what they're doing is the internet signal will come out of the brain and be relayed information via Bluetooth devices. So that means it's only going to be with 10 to 15 foot range on Bluetooth. Experts have cautioned that I the think- Neuralink's brain implements will require extensive testing to overcome technical and ethical challenges and that they're becoming widely available. Mr. Musk, Mr. Musk has also previously suggested 
that he proposes technology should ease the concerns about human beings being displaced by AI. So essentially you're putting the AI. So this is what it happens. Yeah, what, ha- what happens? It goes to it? the back of your brain and a cable sticks out of your brain. They actually have to put an incision into your brain itself to yeah. put this computer in uh-huh. there. And you're going to have cables. You'll have a little flimsy cable like you would have for a hard drive on a motherboard. Really, one You're going to have antennas. Yeah. It, it, it will stick out of your skull. And then you're going to hook it up into a Bluetooth device. And it will help you supposedly see better. It'll help you think better. It'll help you take care of maybe. You... I, think we, I think we can safely say that we are now entering the cybernetic Age. That is it. It's a big race for this. You got ChatGPT on one side, and now we're trying what to hap- what put computers into humans. What ChatGPT takes over the little? Never mind. What happens to ChatGPT? So this takes is, over this is scary. Link. This is scary stuff. As a technologist, I, I don't want someone burrowing into my skull and putting in a computer. I don't care how much testing has been taken care of. Well, do you know how easy it is to compromise there. computers? It is so, so, so easy. So easy. I could take your machine right now, even if you encrypted it with a. Uh, I'll just encryption. invite you over to my house and open the microwave and turn it on. And see what happens. See what happens. There you go. Bad idea. What are we doing? Why are we even allowing that to happen? All right. Story number four, very simple. NVIDIA is now worth almost as much as Amazon as it rides the way of AI. NVIDIA is one of six companies now worth more than $1 trillion. It joins the lists of Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, and Amazon, marking a significant milestone as NVIDIA rides the wave of generative AI brought on by ChatGPT. Well, that ends our top technology stories of the week. Moving on to our next segment, we have Phil Hennessy back on the show to start a brand new segment, Chat About Chat. You're listening to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. We'll be back after these commercials. Hello, listeners. We're excited here at Tech Time Radio, aren't we, Mike? Oh, no. We have an announcement to make starting in June. We're really excited to be a part of an internet radio station. That's right. Coming up in June, you will still be able to listen to us live here at Kixie 880 and KKNW and all of our affiliate stations. But you'll be able to listen to us at 8 a.m. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday now. We look forward to this new opportunity to provide you Tech Time Radio every weekday. And again, you can can always catch us online at techtimeradio.com. <laughs> Welcome back to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Tech Time is a weekly hour technology show that talks about current technology in a simple format without having to geek out. Brought to you by myself, Nathan Mum, and Mike Day. We just had our first whiskey tasting during the break. Now let me tell you about what we are sipping in our pick of the day. During the show today, we have chosen... The 1792 Single Barrel Bourbon, 98.6 proof, 44.94. Now, this is the information about the 1792 bottle we are sipping. Uh, In order to create this unique bourbon, the finest barrels are selected and tasted from the best aging warehouses. Only those barrels deemed exceptional are then bottled individually one by one. This preserves the distinct characteristic of each barrel. The superior bourbon has flavors of rich butterscot and caramel notes. Delicately balanced with the hints of fruit and toffee. The body is rich and lingers on the tongue for a delicate and pleasant finish. It is Sazerac Company, Inc., Barton 1792 Distillery in Bardstown, Kentucky. We've had some other uh, stuff up from the company before. No age statement. It's a straight bourbon. It is 98.6 proof. It is believed to be a high rye, 15 to 25%. Now, you're not a big, normally, you, you traditionally you weren't a big rye fan, but you've become an rye fan over yeah, time. It seems like I'm getting a little bit more uh, adept at tasting. This. All right. So your, what was your first initial uh, thought on this? It was good. You liked it? Yeah. It had yeah. it had that burn that I'm not fond of, but the flavor overwhelmed the, the burn. Oh, okay. All right. I, I, I've had 1792 before. I think I've always been on the... Kind of with you, yeah, wishy washy. Kind of, do I decide to go up on that or do I take a whiff and put a thumbs down? I don't know. We'll see what happens yeah, later on the show. Maybe it tastes better with, with a little bit more air in it because maybe I'm not kind of giving it a thumbs up right now, but okay. All right. Well, with our first whiskey tasting complete, let's move on to our feature segment. Today, we welcome back Phil in a monthly segment that we're going to call Chat by Chat with a plethora of exciting news to discuss about what the big tech giants are up to with AI, Meta, Apple, Microsoft, Google, and OpenAI, all of them together. If we have time, we even may start comparing how Bard, Bing, and Chat 
GPT stack up against each other. We're about to embark on a fantastic journey in the future of AI. Let me tell you, nothing's better, as you heard from our top stories, than wrangling all of this into a monthly segment. And Phil is our technology robotics expert who loves to break down technology for the normal person. Now we start our Chat with Chat segment. Welcome to the AI segment, Chat About Chat, with our tech time guest, my favorite humanoid, Mr. Phil Hennessy. All right, so it's Chat About Chat. Welcome to the Comcast stream, Phil. We got our Chat About Chat. Hi, Thanks, Phil. Guys. It's always great to have you. Now, I know that you were a little busy today, so I, I, I know that uh, hopefully you're feeling well. I know that uh, you had a, a, a couple of things you had to take care of, so always glad to have you on our show. Uh, I did get uh, from our producer that we will have to send you one of our bottles. I, I might have to send you the 1792. It's, it's not one of my va- very favorites, <laughs> so we'll have, to send, we'll have to send that. But okay, Phil, tell us. Let's talk about our first company here, Meta, our favorite company, the parent of Facebook. Tell us what's going on first, define what AI is, and then let's get right into the first company to talk about Meta. But I'm going to jump in and do one thing first. Is that Professor? Uh, yeah. That they, <laughs> There is like five or six different now AI detection tools okay. for teachers and professors. Yes. So they're out there. Yes. So, I mean, he didn't even use the right thing. Yeah, so they're I, there, and they'll tell you the probability of human versus AI. Yep. Yeah, so, so you could put on Grammarly. <laughs> there's tools in there. I mean, there's tons of things there's, that you could actually do to have this professor, but that guy was not very that's smart. That's just kind of funny to me. But so Can't wait till Thanksgiving. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So, so, so what? how do you that, define AI, Phil? What's the best way to talk about a, that? I got a great quote from James Vincent, who is another technology uh, author. And um, when I was doing, um, and actually, for the record, I do a lot. We, I work in computer vision, AI, and machine learning, and so I'm really familiar with the AI uh, AI world a lot in what in what we do for my full time job. So there's a lot of uh, parallels here, a lot of things going on in the computer vision side of artificial intelligence. But sure. so these AI tools are vast, autocomplete systems trained to predict which word follows the next in a given sentence. Okay. As such, they have no hard-coded database or facts, just the ability to write plausible sounding statements. This means they have a tendency to present false information as truth, since whether a given sentence sounds plausible does not guarantee its factuality. That's ah. a nice definition. Thank you for that. That is. That's uh, we should be. Yeah. That's. Uh, I, I. You know that's what? I'm gonna have to make a Vincent. sign because that's, that's very me. important. Because people, when that's they think from, of AI, yeah, and that's that's from James Vincent, another okay. technology author that I've been reading. Um, but I just thought it was so great to just read that today, kind of because it talks about like the one lawyer that used ChatGPT. ChatGPT made up the cases. I read that article. Yep. ChatGPT made up the cases because it sounded plausible. And it sounded good, and the sentence structure was taken care of, and grammatically it, it came out really well. It was probably the guy read like two of them, and they were like, oh, those are right. I'm just going to print the rest. Okay. All right. So to Odie's point, no factuals checking. Yep. And, you know, uh, there's a, I've used chat, I've used different of the AI engines to summarize just an article. And actually, the summary of the article has been incorrect. Oh, there you go. Okay. All right. So tell us about our favorite, though, company. Uh, Facebook and Meta. How, what, what, what are they doing in the AI world right now? Well, you know, they, 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 their all their money has come from a lot of it comes from advertising. So they are looking how to generate use AI to generate specific advertising to certain people. Again, customizing uh, advertising, which is a little scary to me, honestly, because it's already customized enough. They're going to use AI and take that to the next level. So I'm very curious to see that that's all going to work. The other thing is that he Zuckerberg wants to ties it into the metaverse, so you can have customized metaverse content creation. So basically, I can type in I want to generate this type of whatever house or whatever in the in the metaverse, and it'll create it for you. So they're really tying into uh, one advertising, and they want to tie it into the metaverse is what is what we're reading right now. Um, the other thing Meta is doing, which is interesting to me, especially on the NVIDIA news today, is that Meta is looking to create its own um, GPU chips or AI chips. Uh, and so, you know, NVIDIA and Intel do that really well. So um, I'm curious if, you know, Apple and Meta are going to continue to try the hardware for that. I mean, NVIDIA is the 
is the leader in GPU processing for artificial intelligence. Yeah, I don't, I don't quite get why Meta's they they Zuckerberg has a, this deal where he just loves hardware for some reason, right? I mean, he he buys these companies for his virtual reality all the time, and it's all these hardware chips here and there. Now they're going to be talking about these other processing chips that they're looking to deploy. I, I don't get it because nobody's buying Meta's hardware. I mean, if you want to get in the hardware business, you should go to Amazon with their Alexa and different stuff that they have available. But, I, yeah, I, I don't get them. So you're going to have to figure that one out on a business sense to me there, Phil, because I, I don't yeah, get that. Yeah. Well, we'll continue to, to continue to watch that. So, I mean, Meta basically is, is really trying to go after the digital uh, advertising, custom advertising to people, you know, and also with the metaverse and then they're working on their own um, supercomputer, next generation uh, uh, data centers and supercomputers for AI. So uh, that's not surprising me. Everybody's going to need their own cloud if they're, if, and I'm, not surprised Meta doesn't want to use AWS or Azure or anybody like that, right? So I would imagine that's why Meta is going after after that as well. Okay. All right. Well, now let's talk about Apple's foray into artificial intelligence. What's Apple so, doing? Actually, I, I bet I, I'm a big Apple stockholder, so I've done a little bit of research specifically with them. And I actually kind of like their path. I think their path makes a lot more sense. So let's talk about them. Yeah. And so, well, you know, Tim Cook is not being over- uh, with everything, he's it's been subtle a lot of it. So I'm curious in your take, Nathan, what you have heard. But uh, you know, basically, Apple is in the AI play for sure. Um, and uh, some of the predictions that I've been reading, like on forums with Jody Cook and, and other folks, is the big one which I really see. Uh, two big ones I see is the Apple Music. They just bought AI Music in uh, January, February of this year yep. to generate adaptive your own songs and your playlists. So you can have your own song created yep. uh, based off of what you like. So I don't know what that looks like, um, but that is very interesting to me. So instead of just having your own playlist, you can create your own songs in your own playlist. So Spotify has taken the approach where they try to remove all of the AI created songs. And so I get Apple's play, I think is almost exactly opposite of that, where they're actually trying to come up with that so that you can have in the Apple music store itself, the ability to have AI generated music by lyrics that you put out and by artists that you want to have taken care of so you can create your own playlist. So they, they, they kind of, again, I, I think Apple's a little smarter sometimes on how they do this, where you could have your own subscription to their Apple services, where yeah. I believe you'll have so this gonna, AI stuff. We're going to have a bunch of people running around with their own theme music. Yep. Yep. Yeah. When their own <laughs> lyrics that they do for artists, I, I think that's probably that's, a good possibility. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I think like that's an interesting point. And it's interesting because yes, Apple will still own the rights for all those songs. But since how? You, since you use their AI. But aren't they using like artist voices? Like, how do we keep it? So they're not well, using artist voices. So Apple. Well, uh, so, so we'll have to ask using? Phil that. So Phil, you, you tell us a little bit more next week. Come back with Apple. And I, here's here's your homework. Here, are they going to use artists' previous voices, or are they going to use their synthetic voices that they have pre-created? That yeah, that would be a very a interesting. Great, that's a great question, uh, Odie. I'll, uh, I'll 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 let you. I'll I'll let us know. And if it's curated sure to know. the personal person, do they own it or does Apple own that? I, I will let Phil look at that, but I'm sure Apple will. I just want to know how how they're going to create. Like, I want to create a song, but I I listen to everything. Yeah. Is it? So you're going to have, what, are you going to have Guns N' Roses? And then you're going to have... Like, yeah, like Axl Rose singing, singing. classical <laughs> music <laughs> and while uh, while twanging on a steel guitar. Is that in how a country that's going to work? Scott yeah. GPT does, uh, you know, you can have Shakespearean uh, prose yeah, or can. write it in anything. So sure, why not? All right, okay. well, yeah. well, that's all my right. theme music. Well, and what else do you have on Apple's... Uh, sure. The AI? other, the other, the other stuff. I mean, the other big one is is health. Um, they're yep. always being a push into health, and they're going to talk about how to analyze their physical and mental well being. Um, and then, obviously, you have Siri, you have Maps, you have Watch, you have iCal. I mean, they have such an ecosystem that they're going to be probably pushing it all in. And that's what a lot we'll talk about Microsoft and Google. They're doing. They're they're already in testing or beta phases for pushing a lot of AI into their different software suites to do things. And it would make sense for Apple to do that too. Now, do they create their own large language model or do they uh, use somebody else's? So we, so we that, broke that, that last thing. week on tech time radio. So we actually broke a little bit into this and Apple is actually in the process of allowing for Siri, the ability to use chat GPT 
or Bard, whatever AI you want to use to simulate that experience instead of them creating their own because they're a little bit behind the market. They said, forget it. We're not even going to try to do that. What we'll do is we'll leverage the existing areas and you as a phone user will be able to choose those. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. That makes sense. So that that's the big stuff on Apple uh, right now. I, I think they're going to, you're going to see a lot of health and, and music and then a push into their other Apple products as well. Again, supporting writing generation content and uh, you know, all those things. And maybe there'll be a, a latch on the chat GPT then or, or Bard or something. Okay. So, so we're going to move next or next time. Well, let's talk about Microsoft and Google. So let's go right now and just talk about chat bot comparisons. Can we do that? You got, you got that Absolutely. taken care of because yeah, you got, got a lot of info care. in here. And I think this is really interesting because we always talk about these chat bots. So can you kind of explain the the three that are out there, what they do, how they compare against each other for factual information, since clearly people aren't understanding what, what a chat bot does in that space itself? Yeah, yeah. And so the, just to kind of go back again for everybody is that a chat, a chat bot is, is, is uh, only trying to get what uh, – provide a comprehensive sentence – and not necessarily factual. Now we're tuned. They're obviously Microsoft and Google, and everybody's tuning and trying to get as much factual as possible. We'll talk about that right now a little bit. So just remember that. So there's, you know, we have OpenAI ChatGPT, which is uh, invested in as a nonprofit invested in by Microsoft, and they have Microsoft Bing, which is based off of ChatGPT. And it's then not the have, same though. So we've got to you know, be very it's clear. Of, it's based, based off, off of. of that's okay. correct. It's not the same. And I, I, I use. Uh, Chat GPT, Bing, and um, excuse me, and uh, Bard, uh, Bard, and yep. Bard. Uh, we'll jump to that in a little bit, but yeah, Bard is not the one I use a lot. I'll just I did not that. use Bard at all. I hate Bard. Um, and my and, producer Gwen Way is going to get all mad at me because she likes it. So there you go. Okay. <laughs> so so Bing is able to access the web, right? Yep. That is a live bet, and it gives references, which I really like. To Odie's point, you can then double check. Okay. So when you're pull, I want a summary of the news for AI today. Um, and then you just go ahead and it'll give you all the references too and give you a nice summary of that. That's a nice feature. Chat GPT does not connect it to the web. And um, Bard is does not give references at all. So that's some of the major differences. Whereas what, what we're finding is that Bing is not the greatest in creativity, but it, it, it does focus on delivering the data correctly. Okay. And I would say it's probably it's the best part. Where Bard is conversationalist, it's you really don't know the references. And I found that it does do poorly on summarization okay. if I wanted to summarize something. And then and Chat GPT, I would say, is the most comprehensive in a large language model that it's it's a good conversationalist, it's a good summary. It still does make mistakes, to be clear. And uh, it's it's really good also with transcribing uh, speech as well. Um, and it has a little bit more of a creative flair, uh, ChatGPT does than uh, Bard or, or, or Bing. Um, and some of the different tests that were done, so Maxwell Timothy did some testing that I'm gonna reference right now. And so one of the things he had asked three different chatbots is summarize a TV show within uh, 10 words. Okay. And the only one able to do that was ChatGPT. Okay. Uh, another nice, interesting one was, uh, you know, uh, where are we at here? Sorry. It's create a face-off simulated conversation between fictional characters. Okay. ChatGPT. Okay. Um. And that is probably where we're at on time right now, Nathan. Yep, so I think we're almost out of time there. So, so essentially, here's so the, uh, a, re, a rewind on what we talked about. If you have your three chat bots, probably Bard is the one you're not going to use. Uh, would that be correct? That, that is that is my least favorite. Okay, Bing is the one you want to use if you want to have references to information. Yes. And ChatGPT, uh, the client itself, is probably the most comprehensive, as the most creative, and probably does the best job of having that conversation with you, uh, providing information back and forth Correct. that you can cut and paste. Now, what, and one thing I haven't tested yet, 
is the chat GPT uh, add-ins to the browsers that okay. will have access to the web. I haven't had a chance to test that yet. But if I take an article or take multiple articles and put it into chat GPT, it gives me the best uh, summary write-up uh, versus BARD or, uh, or Bing. Bing is much more factual. And then if I want to expand that and everything else, I can use, uh, uh, use uh, chat GPT. So you are copying pasting. So that professor probably did copy paste. Yep. The whole, into- the whole things, but if he's doing that much time, he could probably just read it. All right. Well, that leaves us next time on the show, Microsoft, and we will talk Google. We'll see what new stories are going to be. Cause we probably won't be covering all the stories. So you're going to get to talk to us about the stories, unless there's a mom that does something wrong. And then I'm sure Mike will pick it up again. All <laughs> uh, right. Hey, you, you were the one that gave me the article. <laughs> okay, all right. That ends our segment. That ends our segment. Chat about chat. Up next, we have This Week in Technology. So now would be a great time to enjoy a little whiskey on the side, as we'll be doing so during the break. See You're you listening Phil. to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. This is Mark and Greg for Copiers Northwest with a terrific offer called Printer Care Plus. It's simple. Buy HP printer cartridges from Copiers Northwest and we'll service your current printers for free. That sounds too good to be true. It's made possible due to our HP Copiers Northwest relationship. Copiers Northwest is an HP Platinum partner. One of only two in the entire Northwest. And now with Printer Care Plus, Copiers Northwest will provide free printer service as long as they purchase genuine HP cartridges from Copiers Northwest. That's right. IT departments no longer have to service printers. Or fix paper jams with Printer Care Plus. They can focus on more strategic initiatives. And let our experienced technicians keep their HP printers up and running. Sounds like a love-love relationship for IT departments. Don't get too carried away. So how do they get more details on Printer Care Plus? Call Copiers Northwest today, 206-282-1200, or visit copiersnw.com. Copiers Northwest. New ideas, new solutions. And now, let's look back at this week in technology. All right, Mike, we're looking to June 3rd, 1983. The science fiction film War Games is released. Notable for How bringing that. Yeah, did you enjoy that film as a kid? Yeah. Uh, yeah, was... it 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 shows us the fears that we have about AI right now. That's right. Do you want to play a game? No. Okay, all right. So, notably, it brings the hacking Phenom to the attention of the American public unites a media sensation regarding the hacker subculture, which was probably at the very beginning infancy stage. This has actually probably helped produce it. The film's NORAD, which was the North American Air Defense Command, is combined with organizations of the United States and Canada that provides aerospace warnings, air sovereignty and protection for Canada, the continental United States, and Alaska. The NORAD set was one of the most expensive ever built at the time, costing about a million dollars. Not widely known that the movie studio provided the film stars Matthew Broderick with the arcade games Galaga and Galaxon so that he could have a firsthand experience before shooting the film's arcade scenes. He was not a nerd, so he had to learn what those were. The premise of the movie is David Lightman, a young hacker who unwillingly accesses a United States military supercomputer program to simulate, predict, and execute nuclear war against the Soviet Union. Well, that was This Week in Technology. If you ever wanted to watch some Tech Time history with over two years of video, podcasts, and blog information, you can visit techtimeradio.com to watch our older shows or join the Tech Timers Facebook group or talk with us live all the time. We're going to take a commercial break. When we return, we have the Mark Mumbles review and our technology fail of the week. We'll see you after the break. Hello, my name is Arthur, and my life's work is connecting people with coffee. Story Coffee is a small batch specialty coffee company that uses technology to connect people to each product resource, which allows farmers to unlock their economic freedom. Try our medium roast founder series coffee, which is an exotic bourbon variety that is smooth, fresh, and elegant at storycoffee.com. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Today, you can get your first bag free when you subscribe at storycoffee.com with code TECHTIME. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. The segment we've been waiting all week for, Mark's Whiskey Mumble. Well, today, May 30th, is going to be 
an homage to an old children's song that I don't even know that most people will even know today. Okay. There's a hole in my bucket, dear Liza, dear Liza. Oh, I There's love that song. There's a hole in my bucket, dear Liza, a hole. Then fix it, dear Henry, dear That's Henry, right. dear Henry. Then fix it, dear Henry, dear Henry. Then fix it. Yep. This, with uh, this song. With what should I uh, okay, fix thanks. it, dear Liza, dear Liza? With what should I fix are we gonna, it? Are we going to go there? with what? With a stick, dear. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Go okay. go away now. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Keep on going. The song. Yep. Uh, originated in Germany in the 1700s. It describes a deadlock situation where the character, Henry, faces problem after problem, all due to a hole in his bucket. There have been several versions of the song, too, some with added adult elements to it, while others are politically satirical. Okay. Uh, I believe that the reason why uh, Mark put this in is because today we are drinking ni- or 1792 single barrel Whiskey, and uh, this is from the 1700s, or based from the 1700s. It's an exclusive Washington State single barrel pick. Hopefully it was chosen from the top shelf of the warehouse. As Peggy Noah, the founder of Bourbon Women, states, the upper rows of the warehouse are called the crow's nest. That's where the best barrels often come from. Good to know since barrel picks are becoming increasingly popular. Mark himself has struggled whether to give this a thumbs up or not. The 1792 single barrel is a unique pour of this bourbon, though at a lower proof. 1792 full proof has way more character and flavor punch and has a spot on Mark's shelf. Single barrel is a nice to have, though not a necessity to have, unless you are not a proof hound. But there's a hole in oh, my no. bucket, dear Liza, wow, dear wow, Liza. Wow. All right, Mark, thanks for the mumble as always. Whiskey and technology, what a great pairing. Kind of like soap and water. Right, Mike? <laughs> yeah, okay. Why don't you sing another song? <laughs> All right, let's get ready for our technology fail of the week, brought to us by Elite Executive Services. We are out of time. Congratulations. You're a failure. Oh. I failed. Did I? Yes. Did I? Yes. Did I? Yes. All right. Think about being a pre- pre- presidential uh, candidate, uh, a potential presidential candidate. Think about one of your supporters owning a social media company. What a f- wonderful way to make an announcement to everybody on your best friend's platform. Ron DeSantis debuts his presidential bid was a glitch-ridden horror show on Twitter. <laughs> So Twitter is is our fail this week. What should have been an uninterrupted conversation between DeSantos and the Twitter CEO, Elon Musk, that would be live stream on Twitter spaces to mark the event's great success was anything but that. Instead, the live event essentially had technical malfunctions. After some 20 minutes of crashing and echoing and chaos, it abruptly ended. Tech investor David Sachs, who was supposed to introduce the event, could be heard saying in the background, the servers are melting. A few minutes later, Musk promoted a new Spaces uh, location that seemed to be working, but much more of the audience was not able to attend as the first Spaces had about 500,000 people and the second one seemed to hover about 150,000. Ernest Wilkins, a former Twitter employee who helped build and produce Spaces, said, This isn't even one of the top 150 spaces by size in the history of the product. And yet the servers still were crashing. Could this be a lack of staff? The staff has been whittled down to just about 10% of what it was before Elon Musk's acquisition. And outages have become far more common. Twitter has been a technology fail three times already this year on the show. But how can you top this? Twitter's competitor, Blue Sky, created by the Twitter founder, Jack Dorsey, put it this way. Even though you knew it would turn out this way, it's still amazing that it turned out this way. LOL. Wow. Could they have been hacked? No. Okay. They weren't hacked. They just don't have enough people to actually run the operations. If you don't have enough people running the operations, you can't get things done. All right. Well, we're going to now move on to our Mike's Mesmerizing Moment, brought to us by Story Coffee. This is Mike's Mesmerizing Moment. Presented by Story Coffee. Visit storycoffee.com. All right, so I'm going to ask you a simple human question. If people don't understand ChatGPT, should they be using the technology? Clearly, you had two stories where people don't understand how it works. 
So why are they using the technology? This is one of the biggest problems about having technology advancements in our social, in our social schema. Okay. Okay. Uh, we put information out there. We put technology out there that only a small amount of the population actually know how to use. Okay. And then we're giving it access to everybody else and they don't know how to use it. One. And two, why would they need to learn? That's the reason why we go into McDonald's and everybody looks at pictures nowadays is because of this same sort of phenomenon. Okay. Right. So, so it kind of says like, like when I go to McDonald's now, I got this big, huge touch screen. Yeah. I just and, want and, and, that. I just, I just want, point I, at it. And yeah, like, like a I baby. It's that. like a baby's toy. Right. I mean, I click here, right. I touch here, I touch here. So and then the I'm people done. behind the counter, they don't need to know how to do the things that we did when we were younger, where we had to know the prices of the menu items, know how to add, know how to subtract. Know how to add in okay. tax, know how to add so in we're, tip. We're, we're doing this and we're, so we're, we're letting people with a, not only a lack of education, but a lack of, of necessity accessing these things. And and due to human behavior, we are all looking for shortcuts on ways to do things. And so we're going to be seeing a lot more problems coming up in these types of settings. you got to read some of these manuals. you got to understand how this technology who's works. Gonna, it takes, it who's takes, gonna, it takes a 10-minute training on YouTube. It, you should understand then what's going on. You're, 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 you're outsourcing your, your values right now, and that's the problem. Okay. Well, like you can't make everybody do what you want them to do. I, and that's, the, that's why this is, this is going to be a continual problem. People are going to continue to misuse ChatGPT, or not understand, and they're not going to take the time to learn it. And that's just the way it is. And those people will then flunk everybody in their class. Yeah, your and then relatives, get, and then, and then your they relatives will flunk everybody <laughs> in their class. Right. Okay, let's go to the Nathan Nugget. This is your Nugget of the Week. All right, I'm talking about Movie Pass 2.0. Are you familiar with Movie Pass? I am. All right, Movie Pass 2.0 is relaunching. Movie Pass 1.0, complete failure. It was because it was only $10 a month, and you could see every movie you wanted in a month. That's you right. You go to 30 movies, and they would pay the full price of the ticket. So you'd spend three hundred and sixty bucks and only charge the customer ten dollars. So Not how is a very Movie good. Pass two point oh good. Ah, be? it's a little bit different. There's four different tiers for ten dollars a month. You can get thirty four credits for twenty dollars a month, seventy two credits, all the way up to forty dollars a month, which receives as an individual six hundred and forty credits. Now the credits are cryptocurrency, so it's not actually cash. The theaters have to opt in to use Movie Pass before. You didn't have to opt in to use Movie Pass. You could go to any movie theater at any time, anywhere in the United States, and Movie Pass just paid the full ticket price. Here, the movies opt in, and then they can choose how many credits it costs to see a movie. For the ten dollar plan, <laughs> you're guaranteed one movie at thirty four credits. So opening night, you want to go see what, Guardians one of the movie, Galaxy how three. Long, how many? It's going to be thirty four credits, probably. So a month. So you can go if you pay the, the ten dollars a month. Ten dollars a month, you get to see one movie. Yeah, a month. So right now, if it's a thirty-four credit movie, but let's say I wanted to go and see a matinee, maybe the movie theater wants to have a cheaper price for matinees. They could choose to only have it be twelve credits. They could choose to have it be sixteen credits. They could after the second that's, week of a release. That seems overly the, complicated. Well, it's not really that complicated because each movie theater has a login access to Movie Pass. And they can set up their own theater with their own pricing structure. So instead of having to know what's going on, you'll have to log on to the Movie Pass website, find out your local theater that's available there, and see if you want to purchase the ticket at the credits that are available. If you don't have your credits used up in the first two months, they will roll over. So you can have up to two months balance on there to see your movies. Or, or you can pay $16 a month and guarantee you get a nice seat. Uh, or sixteen dollars a, a theater. Seems, I don't know. Are you are you are you saying this is an awesome thing? I do think this is a good idea. Ten I bucks I a month. Know. I I I pay my theater twenty bucks a month. I get to see three movies a week every week. That's. Are you owning the AMC plans? Yeah, yeah that's twelve. That's, that's twelve movies a month for twenty bucks. Well, or but this movie pass will essentially allow me to go to different movies. The only so if I want to yeah, go out, the only to, problem is is that I have to go to an AMC theater. Yeah, so you don't get all, all that, the movies. And really, there's no problem with that because. You know, that's where I usually go to the theater okay. anyway. Right. Well, okay, screw the movie pass. <laughs> All screw right, movie okay. Pass. All right, okay. <laughs> Let's go to our pick of the day, Whiskey Tasting. And now our pick of the day for our Whiskey Tastings. Let's see what bubbles to the top. All right, we got the 1792 single barrel bourbon, 98.6 proof, 44.94. 
Thumbs, thumbs up. up. Thumbs up for you? Yep. Thumbs, thumbs up. up. I'm going to put a thumbs down. I do not like this. I don't think I liked the last time we had 1792 on. It was not the single barrel, but another one. I, I, it's too much of a bite. It's got too much of a leftover taste after I've had it. Really? Yeah. Mm. So this is the first time, I think, in a long time where you've liked something and I don't like something. That's true. I usually like things less than you. Yes. <laughs> so I, I guess I'm getting more picky is what that says. So, okay. Saccharax Company, Inc. Best of luck. This bottle is a pass for me, and I'm sure Mr. Greg bought too. All right. Well, Mike, we're about out of time. We want to thank our listeners for joining the program. Listeners who want to hear from us, you can always visit us at techtimeradio.com and click on Be a Caller and ask us a question on technology in our Talk Back recording system on our website. You can always stay connected by signing up for our newsletter. Stay up to date with technology. Now, from all of us at Tech Time, it was an honor to host today's show. Remember, the science of tomorrow starts with the technology of today. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that hmm moment today in technology. The fun doesn't stop there. We recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list for the most important aspect of staying connected and winning some really great monthly prizes. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. We're also on YouTube. So check us out on youtube.com slash techtimeradio, all one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at Tech Time Radio, remember, mum's the word. Have a safe and fantastic week.